Good morning and welcome to another Tuesday tour. It's John Sauter along with Michael Fairchild behind the camera. Today we will be featuring Wiley Hall and its namesake, Professor Harvey Washington Wiley. Uh, known to many of our viewers, I suspect as H3, Wiley Hall actually uh, opened up in 1958. Uh, original facility, over 700 men or so um, lived here. Um, but eventually these days it's actually a, a co-ed facility. So if you come back to visit, uh, be careful, there could be a, a woman living in your room as you come back to visit this wonderful facility, near and dear to me, I might add. But if you lived in Wiley Hall, you were a member of Excalibur Club, the student organization uh, here that did all the activities from uh, freshman orientation at the time, through the dinner dance and through the children's Christmas party and all those good things. And then you might have gone downstairs to the Pot and Derby. Pot and Derby is the, was the snack bar at that particular time, serving late night snacks and that sort of thing. Or maybe you were a member of the WILY radio station, Station Wiley, uh, broadcasting here. Um, many good things in Wiley Hall. Many students got started, very popular, because it was right across the street from, uh, from the Co-Rec. And so Wiley Hall, named for Professor Wiley, uh, our first chemistry professor, and we're very fortunate today to have uh, Professor Wiley with us. He's waiting for us on the inside, and we're going to learn all about this uh, very historic man who made a significant difference um, throughout the country, throughout the world, as a matter of fact. And so uh, we're going to go in and hear Harvey Wiley's story. We'll see you inside. We are back in the main lounge of Wiley Hall and so forth to have Harvey Wiley with us. Good to have you here. Glad to be here. Uh, well, let's start off with, tell us about your coming to Purdue and the duties once you arrived at Purdue. Well, I was born in Kent, Indiana. That's in Southern Indiana, uh, not very far from uh, Madison and close to Hanover College. And I, I was seven out of eight kids in my family. Big family. Yes, my dad was a minister. My mother obviously was a stay-at-home mom. And from there, I started out at Hanover in humanities ended up going into the uh, uh, Union to the war. I was there for a hundred days, ended up with a severe case of the measles. Ah. And they uh, released me, they, they sent me back home. I completed my studies at Hanover. And from there, uh, I went on ahead up to Indiana Medical College, I picked up my MD degree there. And from there, transferred on to Butler. And I taught uh, uh, a couple of foreign languages up there, uh, Greek and Latin. And I met a good friend, J.B. Herbert. He was a student. That name was familiar. Yes, I got to know him uh, quite well. He found out that I was then traveling on to Purdue. And he wanted to go along. So I said, sure, fine. So uh, Jerry and I both traveled to Purdue University. And I taught ROTC, R-O-T-C, at uh, Purdue, and uh, also, of course, chemistry. I had the first baseball uh, group at Purdue. And uh, J.B. was an excellent baseball player, and so he was my catcher as well. I had a lot of good experiences at Purdue. And they say that John Purdue had the vanity as innocent as that of a baby. And uh, he, he was a very interesting uh, So you got the interaction. Person. Yes. So we got a lot of interaction with, uh, with, John with him. Founder. And anytime there was an opinion on something, if John Purdue had issued it, uh, it was going to be correct. Uh -huh. There just wasn't much issue. I mean, <laughs> uh, John was always going to be correct. Absolutely. Absolutely. Many of you may know uh, J.B. Harper went on to become Purdue's first graduate, and so Harvey brought him along. Yes, he was my first, uh, actually my first student at Purdue University okay. in, in chemistry. In chemistry, first chemistry professor. Okay. You were much beloved, actually, by the students, but your sense of adventure and trying out new things led to a rather infamous confrontation over a bicycle. Tell us about that. I had a nickel-plated Harvard Roadster bicycle. Fantastic, John. It was 50 inches from the ground up to the seat. I had to have help from the students to be able to get on the seat uh, to ride the bicycle. I had to have help to get off. I had a great time with that bicycle riding all over campus. I also liked to be involved with the students in a number of activities. And I was really feeling good about the job I was doing. And how did you live with the students for a while? Yes, yes, that's correct. The next thing that happened, I had a courier show up and with a letter. And on the left-hand side, it said, Purdue University Board of Trustees. I was pretty excited because I thought, wow, I'm going to have a raise. <laughs> and uh, so uh, I opened it up and what did it say? Reprimand. They talked about whenever I rode my bicycle, I always like to wear my knickers. Knickers, you know, come right below the knees. Yeah. I wore those all over campus. Well, they didn't like me wearing those. They uh, 
didn't feel that riding my bicycle and some of the activities I was participating in were uh, the correct professional guidelines for a professor at Purdue. And so they indicated concern about that. I immediately sent back a note to them saying, okay, I resign. Immediately responded back, no, Dr. Wiley, we want you to stay with us. 1875, 1883, and 1900, all three times, my name actually came up for the possibility of being president of, of Purdue. So after I received that letter, I stayed on for another nine years. Wow. And I had a great experience at uh -huh. Purdue. Loved every minute. You were a little cantankerous, and they didn't know quite what to do with you, but certainly respected you. That's right. Uh, and That's wanted right. you to stick around. Yes. Uh, even to the point of being considered a, for president. That's excellent. Yeah. Food safety became your focus. Uh, led to the name of Old Borax, as well as father of the Pure Food and Drug Act. Explain all that for us. Well, the Father of Pure Food and Drug Act meant a lot to me because I worked most of my career to make that happen. I was somewhat unorthodox in some of the things that I did. Uh, I think it was a challenge to some people, but I could survive most of those because I had a scientific background, because I had a strong political background. I dealt with a number of problems and issues. You knew every, bureaucracy. And whenever you put both of those together, it yeah. really helped me uh, push a lot of positive things. The uh, old borax part of that story was quite interesting. We had what we call a tabletop hygiene group. And that group would meet, it was a group of 12 students. They would meet three times a day for meals, seven days a week. And we would vary different types of nutrition uh, programs for them and keep a record of what happened. It was probably some of the first early studies that were done in that area. We were always careful not to do anything that might have any poison related things. But the media picked up on this, and because of some of the things we were using, they nicknamed my uh, hygiene table group, top group of students, the Poison Squad. The Poison Squad? The Poison Squad. And they called me uh, Old Borax as a result of that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and as far as the Pure Food and Drug Act, we could, we could uh, write uh, many stories about that. It was a fantastic uh, uh, achievement. And it is, uh, as I understand the Pure Food and Drug Act, um, you were quite concerned about the labeling on products in terms of, uh, uh, this is back again now in the early 1900s, and, and you had uh, uh, slick oil salesmen going around and selling all sorts of things, and uh, you never exactly quite knew what was in that product based upon what was on the label, and this was really an effort to try to have all products labeled correctly. Yes, we were always concerned that, that labeling matched what was in the product and the package or whatever. Uh, we also had a lot of whiskey, things like that sold at that point that were not uh, accurate. They, they were ripping a lot of people off, so to speak. Now, I was never in favor of whiskey, but I was in favor of people <laughs> getting what they paid for if they bought whiskey. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so it fit into our group as well. Sure. And uh, I understand you really had some advocates. H.J. Uh, Hines. H.J. Hines was a great advocate. Uh, not everybody was an advocate, but they were very strong uh, being an advocate. Uh, HG, uh, HJ supported everything that I did. He wanted very good labeling for the ketchup and uh, wanted to make sure everything reflect accurately what was in the uh, containers as well. Sure. I didn't have that success with everyone. Coca-Cola, I was not quite su as successful. They were a little sensitive to that. So, so I did have some people that got concerned about the types of things I was, I was trying to do. Mm -hmm. But again, your political skills helped us significantly. Yes. This is Teddy Roosevelt era now. And yes. uh, he yes. was kind of being dealt with by the lobby groups who were against you. And, and yes. uh, but eventually you got to pass almost in spite of him, I guess. I, I could write a whole book about my experience with Teddy Roosevelt. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe he could write a book about me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very interesting times back then for sure. Yes. Uh, Tell us about your widespread recognition for all these significant accomplishments. Well, I, I know in Washington there's, a, there's there's quite a high respect for Harvey Wiley. Well, yes, I, I, I appreciate that. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention my wife uh, first. She was a great supporter to me over the years. Her name was Anna. And uh, I actually rocked the cradle a little bit when I got married. She was considerably uh, younger than I was, uh -huh. but we had a terrific life together. <laughs> and and we were, were both uh, buried in Arlington, which is a oh. tribute to our, our background. Arlington uh, National Cemetery. Arlington National Cemetery. Excellent. Yes, that's correct. Uh, I had a postage stamp, three cents. Look at your three cent stamps when you get home, if you have any, and see if my picture is on one of those. The, uh, you've got to be one of the few Purdue people on a stamp. That's correct. 
you know, that's maybe right. Amelia, maybe Neil Armstrong, and that's right. significant. Right. And the uh, uh, SS Wiley ship was christened with uh, my name on it. Interesting. We had a uh, distinguished professorship here at Purdue. Uh, that was a real honor. Uh, another honor back whenever I was here before I left for Washington was being named the first state chemist for the state of Indiana. Ah. And uh, so we had a, a number of those really neat uh, activities and experiences. And then in the end of my career, I ended up going to work for good housekeeping. That was probably one of the areas that most people are not aware of, but I helped originate and provided the leadership for the good housekeeping seal of approval. My goodness, seal of approval. And, came from. and I suspect you could even find that at whenever you go home today on, on something uh, in mm -hmm. your home. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of uh, a lot of really good experiences. Yep. And uh, all started uh, right here at Purdue University. Yes. And Wiley Hall is that namesake. Yes. You know, and, and the dining hall. And the dining court. Yeah. Recent addition. Yes. So um, anything to add that oh. maybe skip through? Well, it's great to be with you today and be able to share some of the uh, uh, great things uh, uh, of our past. Good. Well, good to have you here. And uh, uh, we might say that this is actually Scott Rumble, a retiree of the retiree groups that uh, do uh, go around and uh, uh, play the characters of a variety of historical uh, folks from Purdue. And uh, he's available, you know, for your classrooms or for your uh, civic groups or get togethers or uh, at a party, he'd be a hit. Um, you might want to contact the Retirees Association and I'm sure uh, Scott would be willing to do that. And we have several of us that, uh, even John Purdue. <laughs> makes the rounds, <laughs> makes the rounds, so. Well, we hope you enjoyed the show today. Um, in, in closing, I would say that uh, uh, we're not quite sure about the, the, the future of uh, uh, Tuesday Tours. This is our 92nd show. And uh, as I mentioned in our last show, I'm retiring at the end of the month. And so there's some conversations taking place, uh, uh, but we're not quite sure, you know, uh, uh, where that's headed. So uh, uh, we'll be in touch. So stay tuned uh, and, and we'll see where that uh, uh, ends up going. And in closing, uh, I do want to say I do retire at the end of the month. Uh, it's great to be here in Wiley Hall uh, to do that. In fact, this office right behind me, uh, that's where I arrived August 1st, 1971, 50 years ago at the end of this month. Uh, I arrived in Wiley Hall one week out of the Army and began my Purdue career. And I'm so proud to say that I've been here for 50 years in one way or another and uh, uh, hopefully uh, making a difference, but being associated with this university has just been such a highlight for me. And I am indebted to so many people along the way uh, that have uh, made all this possible and brought to me and my family so many wonderful memories. So uh, with that, we're gonna end with my favorite song and some highlights from uh, many of the shows that we have done. So enjoy that and hail Purdue. Ever grateful, ever true, thus we raise our song.